and drive. Yeah. Oh yeah. Some dog treats. Yeah. Anybody coming? I don't care. I'm pulling out, bro. Ah! Yeah. Oh, there's heavy equipment in the way. Move. Move. I will mow you down. Stupid. Dude. from Walmart, idiots! Buy your 60 pound box of dog food from Walmart yourself. Ah, hit you! <laughs> oh look, I've got to enter it manually again. FedExers, man, they don't do their jobs. Day in the life of FedEx, about to take off from this house. Now that they have dumped loaders because they are severely cheap at FedEx, the multi-hundred million dollar a year company that contracts their routes out to the company I work for, I had to load all of this myself this morning and I actually left behind an Econoline minivan full of massive boxes I refused to take. So we're going to take you on a little ride. We're going to show you a day in the life of FedEx, one of the worst jobs you can have in America. Best benefits I have are my wages are decent. I have no health benefits for my family, even though what FedEx claims on its income for the year or the contractors making millions of dollars. So I'm not gonna give you guys a Yellow Brook Road version of what this life entails. It is not for everybody. You have to have work ethic that should be valued at $80,000 a year. UPS makes twice, actually more than twice what I do, but they're unionized. FedEx is not unionized. They contract their stuff out to avoid that with a very cheap mindset. And uh, this is after 20 stops already, which was just off this shelf here from there back to the front. This is the rest of my day. So we're gonna shoot a little video of a day in the life of FedEx. And it's God awful. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. If anybody's willing, I've seen people up there 40 and 50 years old, have ambitions and do better for yourself in life. Obtain a career, get a, get a good skill, a trade, an education, join the military. I mean, that's what I'm doing. I've been doing this job for a while now. I should have made this video a while ago, so we're making it today with my brand new phone. All right, next would be you scan your little thingy jiggy, and that's if your stickers are right. 30% of the time the stickers aren't right, or there's a no van scan up front, so all the people that actually work directly for FedEx that drive around a little electric carts and have the laziest jobs on the planet and still don't even do their job properly. Most of the time, this stuff isn't even accurate, so it's worthless, and then you're left dealing with all the nonsense on the route, figuring it out, like, let's do, let's let's climb over all these people's paid for packages, because this is the only way to deliver for FedEx, unless you want to get out and get it from the back, but sometimes stuff's all blocked in everywhere, but just to give you an idea, an individual makes $20 an hour to not put a label on it, so I have to label it myself. <sighs> FedEx for you. Hold on, let me climb down from this unsafe work practice real quick. Just hit this little humanoid, bing, front door, bing, done. Just like that. We'll scan your package. It's already scanned. Hit the humanoid, front door, Done. Some other very important things to consider if you do get this job and you're not used to running triathlons on an everyday basis, there is no AC in these trucks because that would be way too expensive to maintain for us that could possibly have a heat stroke. So you get a Dumb and Dumber version fan that mounts up here and just blows all of the debris that's floating around in here all up in your face and your pores and your eyes. Um, the only thing I've ever really liked about this job was the workout. I've lost 20 pounds because I don't take breaks. I don't take a lunch break. I want to get in and get out. 
on days that are bad, which is like 180 stops, you end up jogging so you can get off at a decent time because my contractor pays me a set amount each day. On a good day, I could make 30 bucks an hour. On a crap day, I could make $10 an hour. Also, if they see that you're on your way home early because you only had 115 stops, do expect that phone call to go help somebody else that may have been lazy or just walked all their stops and has been cussing a storm on their truck because they're unhappy with what they've been given for the load for the day. So in most cases, don't think you'll get off early every day because they'll just call you to go do your second route, which is not in your job description and will dilute your pay even more because it claims that I make $17.50 on my pay stuff, but that's not what I make in reality. I can make a little bit higher 10% of the year the other 80%, they, they will also pay attention hourly you get off and they'll slam you even harder just to milk them profits. Got to get that money, 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 money. So, you know, these are some things you should pay attention to. If you're watching this video, I've seen a lot of day in the FedExes or uh, day in the life of FedEx, and I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I'm going to shoot it how it is because I've already got my next job and career lined up and uh, I'm going to better places. And don't forget about health insurance. In 2020, if you don't have health benefits, I believe you're a dinosaur and you should shut your company down because you're not taking care of your people. What would FedEx be if all of their people walked out or went on protest the next day? They would be nothing. They would have to shut the doors for the day and they just don't take care of people. I got four kids and I have no health insurance. So then they let you go run to the government and get your government insurance because that's the only way to cover your kids even though medical care is out of control these days, not to mention with Corona. People are already skeptical and scared just to even go to the hospital for a runny nose. So keep that in mind. Let's go to the next 555 stops. Things like this will happen constantly. And you gotta like rip people's products out just to, just to get to their stuff. Cause FedEx don't care about their products. They just want that money. No respect for people's stuff. Keep in mind, you'll have entertainment centers, couches, microwaves, air conditioning systems, mini refrigerators, and all that stuff will be back there or in here because it's the only place it'll fit. And it'll literally block in stuff like this. So I'll have to rip those air filters and stuff out of there because they'll probably come out before all the big stuff is. And you can't route the truck to where you can get stuff like this out without moving all that crap. And you'll actually see videos on YouTube of guys that have had enough of this life and they will be parked somewhere just chunking boxes out left and right, throwing it out in the back of the truck because they're done with it. And... Uh, Thank goodness I'm here because I'm going to shoot this video and keep it 100 for you. Let's go. Oh, here's another fun one. The uh, the software they pay for at FedEx. 3015 is where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be dead on it right here at the map. And I'm at 3017. Just one of the 20 to 45 problems you'll deal with on a daily basis is actual iPads that are wrong. Or you'll shoot up to the house and your five houses down. So you got to turn around. you got to back up. But yeah, yeah, let's get let's get it, man. Let's see how we got a job. Oh, here's another one. This is the next box in line. Let's see if we can uh, uh, fucking just uh, uh, but there's a little hook thing right here that just it makes it so much easier to get it out of there so it'll literally clean onto your box and that's what you have to do to get it out now before you say put it over here all this is space that was taken up by boxes that had come off before that box just to give you an idea but hey let's be happy we got a job man let's go to go just make sure you wear your seatbelt at all times because they'll spy on you. They will literally spy on you and expect you to take your seatbelt off for 200 stops and no one complies. <laughs> all right, now we're actually here for some pickups. This is another one I want to cover. So you'll have pickups in addition to your drop-offs and some of my friends that work their route will literally be done with their route by 4 p.m. and they'll have to go sit at Walmart until 5 p.m because FedEx will have the audacity to let these people schedule a pickup for only 5 p.m. and after. And these poor souls will be like, yeah, dude, I'm done by four, but I have to go sit at Walmart for an hour. And I'm like, ha, not me, not doing that, not a chance. So uh, yeah, just another one there. You'll more than likely, or you may end up on a route where you gotta sit places for a duration of time after you're done, just to wait for a pickup window that a company is allowed that doesn't even employ you. You're employed by a contractor, not FedEx. So just, just soak that one in. So again, I'm doing this, I'm gonna edit it, and I have the cars, the motorcycle, the Corvette, the RX-7 with the V8 turbo, and my truck, and everything else that I do, and my review videos, on top of doing this video for you today that will cost me an additional 30 minutes to an hour on the route, so make sure you subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. It doesn't take 
as much to deliver this as it does to just click the subscribe button and just smash the like button because this will probably be the most like turned up version of FedEx video you've ever seen. All right, let's go to the next one. Be happy we got a job, man. Oh, and let's not forget, companies and people will use you to traffic their goods to make them money off of the crappy money you make and the benefits you don't get. It's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. These people literally will buy this product it shows up via USPS and then I come pick it up and it goes out to the person that bought it. As if that person doesn't know how to buy straight from that company. Nevertheless, unless these people are a vendor and as a vendor they only sell five packages a day. At... Well, let's be happy we got a job, man. Let's go to the next place. <gasps> oh, another thing, don't forget, you're expected to deliver in rain, sleet, or snow. When it rains, this windshield will fog up excessively the defrosters from 1994 are just an absolute joke, making it a massive safety liability to the extent that in my backpack, I have to carry like a miniature chamois type thing to actually clean the window. On rainy days on the interstate, this thing is pure sketchy. Even though I race cars and I drift cars, this thing will hydroplane at 65 miles an hour off a little gust of wind, which is another reality of the weathering you will drive through. The weathering that you deliver in is pretty much just direct. But let's be happy we got a job, man. Let's get to the next stop. <gasps> let's give you some more insight. This is what I'll end up doing for the next few hours. This is considered a somewhat tight route. Some routes are tighter, which is dot after dot after dot in a small area. Some people have 160 stops and it's sprawled out way longer, which takes a lot more time. Shift and drive further, etc. Some driveways are hella long. Some driveways you can't get down. UPS can't even drive down driveways because they have a whole lot of pre prerequisites they have to meet because UPS is mad that they got unionized so they don't let them do certain things like UPS trucks can't drive off without their seatbelt on. Their safety equipment stops them from doing that and uh, UPS can't go down driveways. I'll drive down a driveway. I don't care. I don't care at all. I'll do it, but let's go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and don't forget when you do make it onto UPS, which takes a long time to get in because so many people love to keep their job because you start out driving at $32 an hour. $32 an hour. What? I make less than half of that, just to give you an idea of how much I'm making for the FedExers who contract the routes out and make 10 individuals millionaires. Like, one company's for sale right now at my FedEx, it costs $11 million to buy that route. Proof of that. It's that box, I had to enter the data manually. So you better get to looking. Also an example of people not doing their jobs while I have to fix the rest. And these are jobs that they get rid of that are no longer in the economy. Those jobs, they're gone. And I do that job additionally for the same rate of pay. In addition to loading a truck, I didn't have to load before also for the same rate of pay. So man, we got a job though. Let's let's be thankful. Let's go. Signature required. Make sure that recipient is at least 21 years of age. Oh my God. You mean they have to be there or have to bring the package back to the truck and get a slip and walk it back up there and put it on the door? Oh God. Yeah, I'm sure they're totally home. Stupid. This. Not this morning. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. Leaves me home. <laughs> Oh God, thank God she was there. Don't forget, if you have a signature package, you can leave your little sticky on the door, but if they're out of town, you gotta load it on your truck two more days in a row before you can get the package out of your face and out of your life. Which means more work for an item that's not gonna get delivered, and you gotta stop by the house, spend all that time doing, but let's think we got, we got a job, in. Yeah. All right, the next stop is that one down in there. Boxed inside, my boxes that couldn't go up here because I'm just now delivering my walkway availability and these come out after that one so now you'll have to unload all of this to get to that one and then uh yeah these two as well behind this big one not really a big deal let's be happy we have a job come on man let's go uh, don't forget your 70 pounds in dog food that was down there in that bunker behind all this other crap all right let's go 2 p.m. was shooting the video for you guys, and that's how much we have left. I had 148 stops today. The guy that trained me had 178 yesterday. How about no?
All right, new problem. This dot, it's not even the house. It's probably over here somewhere. You gotta find it manually. It's another job description. Go ahead and add it to the same money you make. All right, guys, let's go to the next one. Team lift, y'all. FedEx says, do it your damn self. Whew. Yeah. These are all pickups and a few that'll go back because they weren't even on the map. I am a delivery driver. I am not a logistics manager and a delivery driver, and they certainly don't pay me to be a logistics manager and a delivery driver. So let's begin our hour long drive back in a 97 degree box truck. Oh yeah, and don't forget when you get back, you're expected to check your oil, check your tire pressure, check your blinkers, check your taillights, check basically every aspect of the truck as well. So don't forget that job description either will be a little bit of a different video than I'm used to shooting because I am a primarily auto vlog channel. I have my mini Jeep in the background, my turbocharged V-Rod that I just got. If you're new to the channel, go check that out. It's a pretty cool whip. Um, I wanted to shoot something different. I've seen videos where people have shot, you know, a day in the life of FedEx and it's just the yellow brick road showing you what they do. And it doesn't really show the brass tacks of what really goes on and give you a reality. This is not meant to slander FedEx by any means. I knew what I got myself into. And at one point I was very ambitious about the job. And uh, over time it just dulls individuals out. And it does take a very strict mindset to do so. But I have been on the hunt for a better option for a long time now because I just was not happy with FedEx. And I don't believe for FedEx, for anybody, it's a 20-year type thing. I mean, for contractors, it's a whole different story because it's a level of money you can expect to not be accustomed to if you're able to get that luxury. How people get there and able to buy those routes is an entirely different situation in itself. But the reality is what I showed you. If someone's going to do a day in the life of the FedEx, I don't want to make the same video that 20 other people have made already or 100 people or 1,000 people. I'd like to do a different angle, change it up and give you something different than what you've seen before. And, you know, hopefully if somebody wants to apply for FedEx or is considering it, maybe they land on my video and it'll give them a better consideration of what is to actually come versus people that they bring in on a daily basis. I see they'll talk about training and have no idea what the actual job entails. And the turnover rate is just ridiculous. You know, like just in the last two weeks, my contractor's gone through five people that come in and after two days, they're gone. They don't want nothing to do with it, you know, and. That's the reality we live in. It's not for some people. It's not for everybody. Some people can pull it off. I can, but I'm just at that point in my life where my family needs to be taken care of more than they are now. And uh, we've already secured those options to do so. So I figured I'd shoot this video. I really don't care about the repercussions that come from it if they do. And frankly, if they do, people should consider why they would want to hide the aspects of the job itself if that's the reality it entails. Maybe you should make the job better. Maybe you should do what you can to make our experience as drivers better. But they clearly don't. They clearly don't care. That's life. It happens everywhere in America. It's not just FedEx. With UPS, it's way different. They get paid a lot more. I mean, I've literally met UPS drivers that would be like, oh, I got 200 stops today. I got to get back at home at about 8 o'clock. But they don't care. They're literally optimistic about it because they make money on a whole nother level. You're talking eighty to to $100,000 salaries with UPS drivers because of the money they make. And they also get overtime. I don't get overtime. So just one thing to consider. Um, we'll leave it with the outro so you can see the vehicles that I also own on the side and what started and currently runs my auto vlog channel. And uh, thank you for watching. I hope this helped out. Comment down below if you'd like any questions answered. Make sure you give it a like. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll see you next time. Toodaloo.